the morning after. Pops came back like nothing had happened, as if the open sky had always been his one true home. Only 17 hours had passed since the war began. Yuktibania's war strategies seemed to be minutely timed to avoid giving Osia any chance to launch a counterattack. I got a notice of assignment as a member of the press corps. I guess Captain Hamilton had pulled a few strings for me. I didn't waste any time going to work. Second Lieutenant Nagase, inside the crew room. She's sitting by herself, writing something in her book. Nobody knew what she was writing. I realize these people may well be the story I was looking for all this time. In fact, I was sure of it. Attention! Listen up! The biggest mistake Yuktabania has made in their blitz attack is that it had failed to sink any of our aircraft carriers. We'll evacuate all intact carriers to our inland sea, then use them as a base to rebuild our counter-strike force. You've been called to service on a very important operation, people. Keep that in mind out there. Today at 1500 hours, three carriers from the 3rd Ocean Naval Fleet will rendezvous at Eaglin Straits. These carriers are the Vulture, the Buzzard, and the Kestrel, which has successfully escaped from Port St. Hewlett, thanks to your help. Your mission is to coordinate with the Kestrel and provide top cover for all carriers during the rendezvous. Should you encounter enemy attack, defend the three carriers at all costs. The situation is fluid. So be sure to choose an aircraft with good defensive capability against both air and ground-based threats. Hey guys, one at the Tiger here, and bringing you another game of Ace Combat 5. And this is a section, finally you get to the part where you're the flight leader, and you can buy aircraft, and so you'll see me going through some of these aircraft to see which ones I can and cannot buy. And uh, at the moment, you can buy the MiG, you can buy an F-4, and what I really want is an aircraft that is an um, air-to-air -air aircraft, not an air-to-ground aircraft. And so I pick up the F-20A. Uh, I think I buy two of them. You, you get so many credits per mission that you play. So I pick up two of them. And then from this point on, you can select each one of your um, wingman's aircraft. So what I like to do in this game is I'll pick usually two people to be air-to-air. -air, and usually that's me and Nagase and two people um, to be air-to-ground. So that would be Chopper and Grimm. And so that's exactly what I do. I select um, the two F-20s for Nagase and I, and then Grim and Chopper get the two F-5s. So basically, uh, what I what I had planned to talk about was uh, single-player PlayStation 3 games. But what I'm going to touch on first is the news that I had just heard, and that is that if you haven't heard, I mean, here it is, 9:30 Sunday night. If you haven't heard, then you might want to go and take a look. Or, well, you're not going to hear this for a while, probably another hour or so. But, anyways, the point is, is that Osama bin Laden was killed today. And um, from what I understand, President Obama had issued a strike with, like, counter-terrorist or Delta Force or some sort of a specialized team uh, to make this strike in Pakistan. And uh, the ensuing gunfight uh, killed the man. And I think... 
I, with a lot of Americans, am I'm very happy. Um, it was such a, I don't know, like a, like that weight lifted off your shoulders, even though it's not constant for me, at least being in California. Um, and I've talked about this in, in one other commentary about where I was during September 11th. Um, but just as an American, you know, it's been almost 10 years and we've been after this guy and finally, and I know some people think that we should bring him, we should have brought him to justice and put him on trial and all that stuff. Um, but I'm of that vengeful sort of mind, you know, I mean, uh, yes, I think, um, the court of law has its places, uh, has its place, but I think in this case it wouldn't have done anything. I mean, we would put him in jail and so he would have rotted in jail for the next however long he could live on, you know, and suck money off the taxpayers to keep him alive and in prison. This way he's dead and gone and we don't have to worry about him. And I know the flip side people are like, well, that makes him a martyr. Well, it would make him a martyr either way. You know, it's going to fuel the bad guys either way. Um, but at least now we know that he's gone and, uh, and he, he won't be bothering us anymore. So uh, I think it's a... Uh, a good day for America, to be honest. I really do. Um, good evening, good night, whatever. Um, I just, you know, my coworker, coworkers and I were talking about it at work, and um, the cons, the uh, consistent theme is, is that we're kind of worried that a retaliatory attack is going to happen because of this, and uh, I think that's probably a good bet. The news people were saying that the security is more than likely going to be enhanced for the next several months. Um, so all those colored amber alerts and stuff that you may or may not pay attention to will probably go up. And um, security might be tight around the airport. So when I go to Boston in June, I can only imagine that security is going to be really tight. Uh, probably tighter than normal. So we'll have to see how, we'll have to see what falls out from this. Maybe nothing, you know. I'm, I'm really hoping that the heads cut off the snake. And uh, they'll go away, or at least, you know, as much as they possibly can. I don't think extremism will ever go away, uh, but it's, I don't know, it's just that nice, it's a nice feeling to know that, you know, this guy was a thorn in America's side for a very long time, and he's gone, and we don't have to worry about him anymore. And I, I just hope that those below him aren't as... Um, Devious. I don't want to call him mastermind because I don't want to make it make it sound like he he did something just that nobody else could do. Um, but I'm hoping that perhaps uh, his ingenuity or whatever is gone, extinguished with him. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. I, I, I'm not really properly illustrating this, and I'm not. Uh, I didn't write this down. I'm just sort of you know talking off the top of my head. But um, yeah, I really I really hope this brings an end to a lot of things, and and I. I sincerely hope that it brings closure to a lot of people in New York and in Washington and everyone who had lost a loved one uh, on September 11th. I really hope it brings closure. And to a certain extent, those who aren't exactly sure why we've been fighting in Iraq and Afghanistan, I really hope this sort of brings it home. And I really hope that... Um, Justification is found with those families who lost uh, service members. You know, I believe, I do really honestly believe we've been fighting towards something. I really don't think it's been a war that is uh, without meaning. I really honestly believe that it has meaning. And uh, I really hope for some people this gives them that, that meaning, that sort of vindication that their loved one did not die in vain. You know, they were fighting towards something. And, uh, and it was finally... Um, uh, finally came through to fruition so uh, anyways uh, I know this is sort of taking up half the video but um, I'm going to change topics you know it was quite a heavy topic but I'm going to change topics to a very lightweight topic by comparison and um, that is the PlayStation 3 single player ma games that I have been playing um, I finally finished Homefront I don't know if I mentioned that before I might not have but I'd heard from some people that they did not like they need a home front. They felt it ended very abruptly, and um, my personal take is that home front didn't really end that abruptly. I mean, you don't see the conclusion to the war, but you get this feeling that things are looking up. You know, you get to you fight on the Golden Gate Bridge, and 
there's this change in momentum. The, the Koreans no longer have the momentum. Uh, the U.S. Army has, has got the momentum. You bring them the fuel for the aircraft, and um, the, the big battle that ensues on, on the Golden Gate Bridge is sort of um, the turning point, you know, for the occupation. So maybe they'll have downloadable content later on. I hope this is a game that they will expand because I'm going to keep it. Uh, but, yeah, you do end at a point which there's no real conclusion, but you're left with that that feeling that, Things are up. They're on the up, you know? Uh, what other game that I finished? Today? Oh my god. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. I finally finished that game. Um, I cannot believe that I waited so long to finish that friggin' game. And oh my god, I am so stupid for waiting. I mean, I, I, I know what happened is a lot of time I, I spent... Um, uh, playing Black Ops and playing multiplayer games and, and playing Crisis and first-person shooters and um, I just uh, oh let me actually interject right here. This is a part of the mission where they they're firing these uh, air bursting missiles. Everything below 5,000 feet gets destroyed and uh, later on uh, you fly you fight against the uh, Rimfaxi, which is one of the submarines that are shooting these missiles. And uh, I believe there's one more. There's two subs that I remember. But anyways. Um, so that's what's going to happen right here when it goes apeshit. Like, oh my god, is everything, you know, being destroyed below 5,000 feet? Which is funny because their aircraft don't seem to get damaged, but whatever. Um, but yeah, I don't. going back to Assassin's Creed, I do not want to give it away. But the ending to Assassin's Creed 2 was friggin' awesome. The ending to Assassin's Creed Brotherhood blew my friggin' mind. And if you've played it, you'll know what I'm talking about. I definitely did not see that coming. Um... It really sets up the next game to be very much about Desmond, I hope. I really hope it's about Desmond. I'd like to see some sort of Assassin Creed more in the future, more with the Desmond character. As much as I love Ezio, uh, I think two... Uh, well, I guess you can consider it two games because it's sort of like a half game. I, from what I understand, it's sort of like that bridge game between Assassin's Creed 2 and, and 3. Um, but anyways, yeah, I love that freaking ending it was awesome holy crap so yeah leave a comment if you've played assassin's creed brotherhood and you absolutely love actually if you didn't like it let me know too but i loved it it was freaking awesome blew my mind uh oh here comes the ballistic missiles and they destroy they're like air bursting missiles but they destroy our sub or that's our aircraft carriers which is really kind of strange but the boom there it is and um they're like get one get about five thousand feet um the last game that I finally, finally finished was Crisis 2 single player. Uh, and that kind of goes without saying because any sort of multiplayer game now, or, or any sort of first person shooter game, I don't really get into the single player. I go right to the multiplayer. Um, but in the past, I had used the single player as a way to get like good at the game. And back in Modern Warfare 2 days, I used it really to hone my skills and, and aiming and just getting better. And for instance, my older brother, who would come from Battlefield, was decent at Battlefield. Um, he, we told him, my D. Wits and I, we told him, "Hey, look, uh, play the campaign all the way through and play it on a, a difficulty harder than Greenhorn or whatever the hell the the, the easiest one is, and, uh, and it'll help you out tremendously. It'll give you a leg up." Well, I think now because of Modern Warfare 2 and Black Ops, most of us have played online, uh, so you really don't need that sort of crutch to get yourself going, you know, to get yourself acclimated to the first-person shooter uh, style and controls and stuff. Um, but anyways, that's what I used to do. And so finally, it took me a while, you know, I just figured, what the hell, I don't have anything else to do. And so I played Crisis 2 all the way through. I mean, I had played it uh, probably 75% of the game before the PlayStation Network went down. I'd play it on and off, you know, single player mode. But it's kind of hard to play single player mode when there are people online sending you messages like, hey, let's play online. You're like, you get through one mission, you're like, fine, okay, let's play online. So I finally got through it. And that game, that ending confused the crap out of me. I don't quite understand what's going on. Um, Alcatraz becomes preacher, or prophet, I mean. Uh, I don't quite get it. If you guys get it, please let me know, because I just don't get it. Uh, but it was a good ending. I Actually, the last level, uh, I was like, you know, 
I put my sneaky pants on. I was sneaking around like no one's business because I did not want to get in these gunfights with the really red alien guys because they took bullets for days, man. It, days. It was insane. So, anyways, guys, uh, this game is about to wrap up here in a minute. And I um, hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to definitely continue playing this game. And then when the PS3 or the PlayStation Network comes back online on the 3rd, I'll be bringing more Black Ops and stuff uh, soon. And, uh, and by the way, I decided to delete the Medal of Honor stuff. You know, I put the dispute in there, but I deleted uh, the video, so I'm not going to really do a playthrough of, the, of Medal of Honor. Um, I don't know. It's just not worth it. I don't feel like getting into any sort of disputes and copyrights. And yeah, I'm just going to avoid it and uh, just go from there. But uh, anyways, guys, you guys take it easy and have a nice night. Later.